Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents have built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, hey, thank you for tuning in to Super Agents Live. I really appreciate you. I know, look, I know all you guys are busy out there slaying dragons. So to come on and spend some time with me, I really appreciate it. Okay. I think you're going to like today's episode, man. Um, this is a guy that I met um, through Tom Ferry. Tom, Tom reckon, you know, said, told this guy about me. He said, hey, get on Toby's show. And, uh, and look, let me give you real quick. Uh, why you should listen to this guy. This guy is on the board. He's got an interesting background, number one. But number two, he's on the board of Zillow, a publicly traded company. Do you know how hard that is? You got to really be somebody to be on the board of a publicly traded company. So uh, so look, I was, I was uh, fortunate to have this guy on. Here's what we talked about. We spent a lot of time talking about how to stay relevant. Now, I dig into this because if that doesn't make sense to you, it will after you listen to him explain it. Uh, we also talk about how he, he, he quit his regular corporate job and worked, went to work with his wife. They worked together and they went from six transactions to 106. And now this year, their goal is 250. How did he do that? That's what I asked him. And, and really, it boiled down to really making the business a business. He, we talk about why you should corporatize your business. Okay. But before we get to that, let's hear from our sponsor. We all know the best kind of referral is one from our sphere or farm, but how do we stay top of mind? Now, most people, they take a three pronged approach, right? They door knock in their farm, they call people and they mail them. Most people fall down by not getting to their people, their sphere, their farm, they don't get them engaging content. And look, you know, sure, we can list them a postcard or we can send them an article that we think is going to be of interest to them. Our new sponsor, Discover Publications, takes that one step further. For just slightly more than the cost of a stamp, Discover Publications creates a completely customized newspaper. Now, they'll go out and they'll curate content or you can create your own. All of my sponsors are white leveled. Now, I called... Prior to having them on the show, I called some of Discover Publications clients, and I talked to this one guy, and he does some interesting things. He'll go out and interview restaurants that are in his farm, in his sphere. He creates a write-up. He, interestingly enough, resells advertising in his own newspaper to his trusted network, whether that's the plumber or the insurance agent. And by the way, this guy has 60% market penetration. He told me the paper has cemented those numbers. If you're interested, go check out discoverpubs.com. Let me know what you think. Real quick, before we get to the content, uh, if you're new to the show, welcome. The hashtag for this show is unpack that idea. Now, what happens is, is if you tweet that, tweet something you hear from the show and use that hashtag, unpack that idea, it's a big follow train. I'll follow you. I encourage everybody in the audience to follow one another, and people are getting from 100 to 300 new followers by using that. So I would suggest you do it. If you're not on Twitter, go get a handle and get on. Um, we are going to have, I'm, I'm pitching this early just so everybody knows they can put it in their schedule. The third week of July, I should probably come up with a real date, but third week of July, we're doing a, a, a live event. Uh, it's going to be small. It's 10 to 12 people. It's going to be 150 bucks. We're going to rent a corporate suite or a suite at a hotel here in San Diego, and we're going to mastermind all day. It's going to be super valuable, and uh, I'm, I'm probably going to have a, a surprise guest there. There's a couple of people that uh, have, you know, that's been on the show and that's offered to do it, so it'll be valuable. Um, real quick... Uh, Everything is really getting held up because I can't get my developer that I got on Odesk to finish up our membership site. And and look, that's there's going to be paid levels and there's going to be free levels and it's going to be super duper valuable, super valuable. I've been spending time curating content, whether that's on social media or lead generation or f farming or whatever. And I have all this content. I can't get it to you until we finish this membership site. So if you are a WordPress pro, if you know how to use Wishlist member, that's a, that's a plugin, 
send me an email, man. I mean, well, let's trade something. Let's let's do something. Help me out. Help a show out. I need some help with WordPress. So I know uh, I trade some emails with Renee uh, out there, and she's she's it sounds like she's competent. She knows what's going on, but she's on vacation for two weeks. So if there's anybody else out there, uh, reach out. And Renee, if you're listening to this, I may not have anybody when you get back. So let's get it. All right. Let's get to the show. All right, today on the show, we have a guy that uh, uh, Tom Ferry was nice enough to introduce me to him. I'm lucky to have him on the show. He's got a super varied background, and we're going to get into it. His name is Chris Spiker. Hey, Chris, thanks for taking the time out today. Hey, thank you very much for having me on the show. I look forward to uh, the next hour. Yeah, I'll tell you what, by the way, what a cool name, Chris Spiker. That is, uh, you know what I mean? That's like a movie star name. Hey, you know what? Well, I appreciate that. I hope my wife. I hope my wife likes it as much as we do. <laughs> well, listen. So, Chris, you know, I, I told everybody you have a, a really varied background, um, and you know, your background is from you know starting uh, brokerages, all the and doing tons of stuff, and even being on the board of Zillow. So, take a minute, tell us a little bit about you and and all the stuff that you're working on, or some of the stuff you're working on right now. Sure, happy to. So, my wife has been in the business for more than 20 years. And about four years ago, we decided to start working together and build our real estate empire. Uh, It's actually more like a team, but we we think it's our little empire. Uh, Prior to that, um, I worked in the technology sector. So I spent about 10 years in the marketing group with Microsoft, um, working in their certification division, spending time mostly in the Americas and Western Europe. So my background really focuses on strategic marketing, advertising, and coming from a, a, a corporate mindset. And I think that that's one of the things that has really separated us from the the competition and the rest of the agents that we deal with on a pretty regular basis. And I'll, and I'll, I'll give you a quick example. When I joined my wife, um, you know she's she's an excellent agent. She's a she's a master negotiator. She's amazing with clients, um, but she was struggling to maintain relevancy in in an ever changing climate. The internet was taking off. People were searching the web for more information. Traditional agents, I, I think, did not know, for the most part, how to how to keep relevant. So when I joined her back in 2010. Uh, that year, we did a whopping six transactions. You know that that's not a lot of transactions. And last year, 2013, we ended the year with 106 transactions. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so we, I, I brought what I think is a corporate structure to the team. We have business plans and marketing plans, and we have specific things we look at when we hire. We, you know, we are very, we do our due diligence and run ROI on all of our marketing programs and advertising programs. And what it's really done is allowed the people on the team, specifically my wife, to focus on what she does best and let me do everything else. So the the ride has been fun so far. You know, I said 106 last year. Our goal is 250 this year. Okay. That's, a, I love it. I, so let's back up for a second. So you have your background is uh, is is corporate in strategic marketing. Your you said your wife struggled with staying relevant. What does that mean to you? Being relevant. What that means to me is that using the example of Peggy Lynn, an excellent agent, great with people, uh, a master negotiator, uh, somebody who understands the the intricacies of real estate inside and out somebody who is amazing in front of people, but somebody who didn't understand, fully understand the impact that technology and the internet would have on the real estate, real estate as a whole, how to, how to, how to make sure that, that her ROI for any spend that she did online was correct, how to, um, you know, how to use even DocuSign, how to make sure that if we did decide to to partner with Zillow to make sure that we looked at that and looked at ROI month over month, year over year, quarter over quarter, what what were people searching for on Google to find to find her? What um, you know? What could we do at a listing presentation to separate ourselves from the herd when it comes to what we do 
online. And I, I think that was one way to remain relevant. And I think a bigger picture and something that you hear a lot of talk of, talk about now is how do agents as a whole remain relevant when data transparency is becoming more and more acceptable in our in our business. So that's what I mean about relevancy. And and I think that you've there are a couple there are a couple verticals that they didn't know how to remain relevant. If you look at if you look at the people that worked at record stores, if you looked at travel agents, if you look at a lot of those 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 verticals didn't understand how to harness the power of the internet in order to help their brand and remain relevant. Um, and you know, I think that's critical going forward. And with without having both sides of that skill set, I don't see how an agent can be successful. Okay, got it. And I'm still struggling a little bit with with that because we you, you talked about taking you know uh, what what Peggy Lynn is that your wife Peggy Lynn or Peggy Sue? I forget. Peggy Lynn. Peggy, that's a song. Peggy Sue, huh? It's a Buddy Holly song or something. Um, exactly. <clears throat> So Peggy Lynn, she was she was great negotiator, amazing with people. Didn't know how to to track her ROI when it came to you know marketing spend. Um, so that's one piece of it. And, and then you talked a little bit about you know how technology disintermediated travel agents, disintermediated record stores. Um, um, can you unpack that relevancy thing a bit more and how that how how you use technology to stay relevant? I mean, are you talking about? Well, go ahead. I'll take off from there yeah so so i i i think in, in this in this industry um the more and more people there's more access to information right. there's there's more access to data so our value to the client so there are two things right our value to the client needs to shift okay we're no longer the gatekeepers of information we're the interpreters of that information and then there's also how do you when clients or leads or people, whatever you want to refer to them as, when they're searching for help online, how do you make sure that you're the one that they find? And when they do find you, how do you make sure that you satisfy their needs from a technology standpoint? Because if somebody, if I was very good at finding, you know, having Peggy Lynn found online and my team found online, Yet we took documents over the over to their house at ten o'clock at night to get initials to ratify a contract. We wouldn't be we wouldn't be technologically advanced enough to have people say, you know what, that was really a smooth transaction. So there's relevancy um, across the board when it when it comes to keeping up with technology, and, and I think that whole package is is what's missing. And I think that that's one of the reasons, and we might get into it in a little while. That's one of the reasons that there there's that shiny penny syndrome in our in our market. It you know the next thing comes out, the next app comes out, the next company comes out, and they guarantee the leads, they guarantee the the um, to make your life easier, and everybody jumps at it and spends the the dollars on it instead of the slow and steady marketing plan, business plan. And you know, relentless consistency to execute on those plans. Right, I, I totally agree. I mean, and there's and there's there's a lot of stuff there that you said. Right, I mean, number one, being having a plan, right, business plan and marketing plan. Most agents don't don't have that. You know, and much less the the next step tracking tracking all the dollars they spend on marketing uh, to to really understand to break down and understand their are their return on. <clears throat> on that the the dollars spent there what you said earlier again talking about relevancy so peggy lynn uh she in order to prove her value to her clients right you can't take a stack of documents drive them over to their house at 7 30 at night to have them sign it so that's that's one piece of where you can use technology right i imagine just using docusign or something technology to 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 increase the value uh and and make a smoother transaction for your client or prospect or whatever. The other piece, Chris, is is you have scaled from six deals to a hundred and six deals. You know, without utilizing technology in the right way, there's you could not have scaled that fast, right? There's a lack of scalability. W without question, if technology enables us to better serve our clients, period. Technology does not replace us. Technology. It does make things easier, but but at the end of the day, the the use of technology for us is making our client experience better. And 
without things as simple as DocuSign or as, um, you know, as, as, as big as something like a Boomtown or using a transaction management system or a CRM to follow up with our clients, whatever the case may be, without those pieces in place, my team would be three times the size because I'd have people pushing paperwork and it right. wouldn't be, uh, you know, the, the ROI wouldn't be there for me. So technology helps my team better serve the clients while it's saving me expenses um, to do that. Got and it. Without those things in place, you, you can't scale. Got it. Okay. So now for me, just now, again, this relevancy idea came, came into focus. Let's talk about some of that technology. Um, um, so you mentioned, so you have a CRM, like a top producer, you have Boomtown, uh, which is lead generation. Uh, you have DocuSign to make things uh, smoother. And, and so uh, it, for somebody out there doing six deals or 10 deals or 20 deals, talk to us about some of that technology that they should, they should start to have in place, uh, so that they can, they can scale better and provide a better, uh, experience for, for the, the consumer. You know, it's it's interesting you you bring up that topic because, as you mentioned earlier, not only do I sit on the advisory board at Zillow, um, I recently took a position with the Tom Ferry organization as his internet marketing advisor. Interesting. And I just had the privilege of spending two days out at his offices with him, and we're working on that exact blueprint. So, what does you know, what does that that template look like for somebody who's doing six to 25 deals? What does that template look like for somebody doing 25 to 75 deals? What's that template look like for a team doing 100 plus deals? So, you know, I think that there are very basic, basic requirements for somebody who's getting into the business versus much more in-depth and expensive requirements for, you know, somebody who's running a, a team of our size. So if if you're getting into the business, you have to have, without question, some sort of web presence. Um, you know, that web presence could be as simple as one of the free Zillow sites that's IDX enabled, but you need people to be able to find you. You need, the first thing that people do these days, when they get a contact with somebody or when they're referred to somebody, they're going to Google you. Yep. If they can't find you, they're probably not going to use you. And I'll give you a great example. We actually, we have a listing right now. And my wife just got a call a little while ago from one of our clients who uh, an agent scheduled to see the home. And she went on Google to find the agent and couldn't find any information about the agent. Called Peggy Lynn and said, listen, before I let this person in my house, I want you to find out who they are. <laughs> and you know what? That, that To me, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, that, that's an informed seller. It's it's somebody who I can't find any relevant information about this individual online who's supposed to be a real estate agent, and I'm going to let them in my house. So you need um, you you need some sort of web presence. You need to get yourself on the syndication sites, whether you like it or not, like a Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com. At the minimum, you need to fill out your free profiles. If 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 a site like Zillow is generating seventy plus eighty plus million unique users a month, you have to be there. Whether you agree with the syndication argument or not, it doesn't matter to me. If the eyeballs are there, you need to be there. Um, I, I think that electronic signature these days is a must-have. I think people have come to expect that. Um, I, I don't want anybody showing up at my house at nine thirty at night to get final signatures if I'm trying to get my kids to bed or whatever the case may be. Um, and, and I don't, I don't necessarily think that there are that many more pieces of, of technology that somebody just starting out needs in order to be successful. I, I do think that co some sort of contact management system to keep track of who your clients are is important. Do you need a fully developed CRM at that point? I don't necessarily think so, but if, if you've done a three or five year business plan, and you know that you want to grow and you want to stay in this this business for a long time, then investing in some sort of CRM is probably um, the, the right way to go. Um, but outside of that, I don't necessarily think that you need to do that. There are, of course, advertising expenses if you want to start generating leads right away. But, um, you know, kind of as a template of what you need to get started, I think that that covers most of it. 
Right, I, I totally agree with that. And before you, and you were going to let that CRM one go. I'm glad you added it because I was going to add it. And look, you know, your CRM, if you know, it, you don't have to go buy top producer. That's a, too much for a lot of people. Um, you know, they, that can be a, 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 an Excel spreadsheet in a lot of ways, right? It's it's your list, it's your database. Without question, is you at, at what you have to have is the ability to track your clients and the people who you're trying to get in touch with. And 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 I, to your point, I don't care if you keep it in Outlook, if you keep it in Gmail, if you keep it in an Excel spreadsheet, it doesn't matter to me. But that database needs to be up to date and it needs to be kept somewhere. But as you grow, it becomes much more important to have a fully robust database um, or, or CRM. And, and we utilize Boomtown for our entire CRM right now. But Boomtown, Top Producer, whatever the case may be, as long as you're investing in something it, it, it'll get you further than a lot of agents that I know. So, so what about this, you know, so this agent who, you know, I, I, I can't believe that in 2014, uh, uh, I, well, I found it hard to believe that this person would not have any kind of online presence. The one that, that, you know, who this, the seller could not, I mean, you know, there's, there's all sorts of free, uh, LinkedIn free, right? You, you should be on LinkedIn. Um, uh, I mean, there's so many Facebook, Right. I mean, have, you know, um, uh, there is a, about dot me where you can fill out a little profile of yourself and, you know, you, you can make that your little business card if you had to. It doesn't cost any money. Um, is that something that you see, Chris? Is that uh, is that something that uh, a mistake that agents are making? Yeah. Or she and, just and, and if you look at and I'm, I'm trying to pull it up right now, but if you look at the um, the highlights from the most recent survey from NAR about real estate agents and websites and the technology that they use, the statistics are staggering at the people who either don't have a website or simply rely on the brokerage's website to be their, to be their website. And I, I don't want to misquote it. It's in here somewhere. But, you know, I thought the number was higher than like 30 or 40 percent oh my gosh of, of people who do not have their own web presence and it's just it's mind-blowing and and I, I i don't know if it is i don't know if it's how quickly this market has evolved i know that the average age of a real estate agent has grown again this year has increased and it's now 57 years old it's not to say that people who are older don't have the aptitude or the ability to do that, but I think, you know, I see it with my, you know, our daughter, you know, the, the older I get, the and the more quickly that technology changes, it does get a little bit tougher to adapt. And, um, you know, it just, it's shocking the number of people that don't, you know, it's a business card. It's, it's your online business card. If you had the choice between having a business card or a website, don't order business cards and get yourself on the web. Yeah. And the new business card uh, for for somebody like me and you, Chris, is having a book, writing a book. That's the new business card. It, it, it is, and if you look at what you know, Chris Smith and a lot of the people have done, and and Tom and um, Dave Linegar and Gary Keller, and it it, it 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 is, and to to be able to be published, um, you know, these days, if you're looking at the eBooks or something smaller than that, something you know more simple. It's not tough to do, but again, it boils down to the relentless consistency of executing on that plan if that is what you want to do. Um, you know, I don't know if, to your point, I don't know if the the book is something that the general public is going to pick up on, but for the the circles that that I try to stay in to remain relevant in cutting edge technology and best in class service that we provide. I'm right there with you. Yeah. Um, so so let's talk about that for a second. And, and by the way, I mean, I don't know if you want to add anything to this. Prior to this call, to this recording, you, you and I chatted for a few minutes, and uh, and you, you sort of lamented the 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 low barrier to entry into uh, this industry. And and due to that, I wonder if that's it. You know, you have this fifty seven average age fifty seven year old guy or gal out there. Um, don't don't know, yeah, gal. Don't you know? Uh, it's low barrier. They all of a sudden they're like, hey, I'm going to sell real estate, and uh, and they you know they think they just get their license and they're going to start talking to their friends and they're going to have a business now, now they might sell some houses but they're not gonna have a business and so 
I, I am happy to talk about this. <laughs> okay. I, I am a firm believer that the number one issue in this business is the low barrier to entry in order to become an agent and or a realtor. When, and I can only comment in the state of Maryland, when somebody wants to become a real estate agent in the state of Maryland and can take a an, an 80 hour online course and never have to set foot in a classroom and then go into a test center, pass a test and simply affiliate with a broker, which then gets you to the local state and national affiliations, including the realtor designation, that's a joke. And there are no courses that you have to take during that process on being a small business owner. There's nothing about customer service. There's nothing about uh, financials. There's nothing about um, you know lead generation. There's nothing. There's nothing. It, it's simply here are the state laws and here are the you know the 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 national guidelines to becoming a real estate agent. And I've always said, if you put ten real estate agents in a room and five of them are realtors and five of them aren't. And you said to the general public, you know, would you work with a realtor versus not a realtor? They'd simply say, well, I thought they're all realtors. Right. I, 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 the, 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 I think that there is an industry that has done it right. And I think that, um, it, well, it's the CPAs. I, I think when, when you want to do your taxes, everybody looks for a CPA. And the, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants working with the state boards of accountancy has done an amazing job at, at creating a high barrier to entry and really putting the, um, the CPA designation up there as, as the cream of the crop where I don't think people would even think about doing their taxes without a CPA. Yeah. And look, let me put some color. Uh, I don't I don't, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time about this low barrier, but uh, let me put some color around that. So you said, hey, you can take an 80 hour line, online course, never step foot in a classroom. And there's tons of stuff that that you really don't learn before you can go out and get your license <clears throat> to put some color around that. I recently read a little article or something and uh, and it, 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 it was a compare and contrast between uh, the training that a real estate person would have to go through as opposed to somebody who is a hairstylist hairstylists have to i mean they have to go in and do tons of i mean it was crazy like it was a, a nutty a nutty amount of time like 400 hours or something like that learning how to cut hair and then and even a step i forget if it was a step above or below that but you know the like uh the girl i don't uh, the girls who do your nails i'm not sure what those not your nails, Chris, but girls' nails, right? The the nail people, like they have to go through a, a two or three hundred hours of on the job training to just to to put nail polish on your fingernails, and then you have this real estate agent who, who is going to guide people through, you know, finance contracts. I mean, it, it's it's the biggest per, you know, I don't, I don't have to say that, but no, anyway. I, I I, I, I'm right there with you, and that was the that was the analogy that I was going to draw as well. And I just pulled up the Maryland uh, Board of Cosmetology. To your point, um, applicants must submit proof of completion of 600 hours of training. Crazy, 600 hours. Now, the the there are different requirements that are lower than ours, and and things like that. But you know, this is one of those fields that somebody should have to have to go through some sort of mentorship program or internship program with an agent that can teach them the ropes but the industry as a whole is not set up like that because they're in competition with each other um right so you know there, there there's so many pitfalls into that but i think it boils down to as we talked about the the barriers to entry are too low and that that's that's something that has to happen at the at the national and state levels. But kudos to you for looking at that cosmetology analogy because I was going to do the same thing. Got it. Yeah. Thanks. No problem. Well, look, and and look, that's why the show exists in a lot of ways, right? We, the, I want to help aspiring people reach their dreams, and you know, there's no other access for this kind of thing. So let, I want to talk about. Uh, so prior to to going on this tangent. You talked about your circles, right? You want to you want to stay uh, stay. You, you want to associate 
with the best of the best, and, and in turn, that will make you better, right? You want to be the dumbest guy in the room. You never want to be the smartest guy in the room. Talk- and that's usually how it goes. <laughs> or, well, I doubt it, man. I mean, it's 15 years of Microsoft. But talk to us about that a little bit. How? What are the things that you do, and, and how can people in the audience uh, learn from that and, and you know step up their game? Well, I, I, I think it comes with a desire to, to continually – get better and the desire and the drive to make sure that the service that you're providing and the things that you're doing for your clients exceed what everybody else is doing. And and again, I don't know how a regular agent or a one-off agent could even do it these days. And that's one of the reasons that my wife and I decided to build a team. I don't work with clients. Um, I don't sell. I never put any clients in my car. Um, my focus is running the business and building the business and just recently, you know, giving back to the business and the, and the community in hopes of doing very similar to what you're doing to, to help raise that bar and make people better. Um, you know, so the, from the, from the people that we decide to surround ourselves with, Tom Ferry, Greer, who you've had on uh, from Boomtown, yep. um, you know, Michael McClure. They're, they're just a bunch of people that we decide to or I decide to surround myself with that are cutting edge, but understand the importance of making sure that the basic fundamentals of the business remain solid. And and Mark Davison is 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 one of those guys that, you know, goes to these conferences and it's always the shiny penny or what's going to happen in 10 or 15 years. You know what? 10 or 15 years, let's talk about 10 or 15 weeks or months and how we can right. shore up our business to make sure that we're servicing our clients today. Because if we're not doing that today, 10 or 15 years won't be around. I totally agree with that. So so, so um, <clears throat> you teed something up that I was going to ask you. Earlier you said, so so a minute ago you said, let's, let's look at 10 or 15 uh, weeks or months. I'm not sure which you said, but so 10 or 15 weeks or months. Um, and then five minutes ago, you talked about an agent, you know, not, not writing out a three or five business, three or five year business plan. I mean, is that something you would recommend? That's something that I wouldn't necessarily recommend because, because, you know, the world changes so fast. I mean, you can draft out a plan uh, for the, the next 36 months, but. I mean, you're going to have to alter along the way for the people and in, in my audience um, in developing a marketing plan, developing a business plan. How far out should they be looking? 12 months at a time. You know, I, I think that that you need to start with the fundamentals. You need to decide what you're going to spend your money on and what you're going to execute on over the next 12 months. And at the end of that 12 months, look at your ROI and determine what's working, what's not. Um, go deeper with what is working, get rid of what's not working, and then decide at the end of those 12 months, where do you want to go from there? Um, When you start talking about three years, five years, 10 years, my wife and I have that vision of where we want to be in five years, where we want to be in nine years. And and the truth is we're we're one year into a 10-year plan. And in nine years, if we do another show, you'll be you'll be catching me on the beach in Hawaii drinking a Corona <laughs> because we'll be done. Yeah, we're, we're we're only in this for nine more years, and that that is what the, the plan that we're executing on. But for the for the general public or, or for the for the agent who isn't at that level yet, you need to know what you're doing this year. And I think that there is so much noise in this in this industry that if you don't have a plan in place. You'll spend five hundred dollars here, five hundred dollars there, and in two months something new will come out, and you'll take your spend out of that and put it in something new. When the first one you never gave a chance, and you you see it you see it less in traditional stuff. So farming, if if you're sending out postcards, you know it's going to take twelve to eighteen months to see an ROI. But in today's always on, always wired internet instantaneous, you you put $500 a month into internet lead generation, 30 days in, you don't see a return, you're angry and you want to get out of it. So create your 12-month plan, make sure that's solid, make sure that you have your, your spend in place and what your assumed ROI is, track that ROI on a quarterly basis, and then at the end of the year, look back and say, again, what worked, what didn't, go deep with what did and get rid of what didn't. 
Let me break in here with a message from our sponsor. Our sponsor, Discover Publications, will create a customized, branded, 12-page newspaper that will be sent out to your farm and sphere. Now, this paper is cheaper than you think. For slightly more than the cost of a stamp, you can start sending out curated content and always stay top of mind. Never lose a deal again because that prospect just happened to forget that you were in real estate or misplaced your number. Go check them out at discoverpubs.com. Well, so, so I mean, that, that was a good illustration of that, that shiny object syndrome, right? Or you call it <clears throat> shiny penny syndrome or something. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it, it, certainly it's death by subscription in a lot of ways, right? You, you throw 500 bucks here, it doesn't work for two months, and, and you move on. How does, because uh, the world is changing very fast. New tools are coming out. Um, uh, how long would it take? I mean, if I throw, if I, if I, let's say, you know, again, Greer has been on the show from Boomtown. We dug into his business and what he does. Um, I take, uh, I think it was 1500 bucks a month was sort of the entry. How long should I give Greer and Boomtown a chance before I move on? Once we decide to pull the trigger on something, um, it's very rare that we don't give something a 12 month commitment. Got and it. if we can't, if we can't, um, if we can't afford that 12 month commitment, then it, it's really, we shouldn't even be having the conversation with, with, uh, with a company like Boomtown. And, um, but, but it, it, it's like working out with a trainer, right? If you worked out with a trainer and gave the trainer 90 days, it's not going to work. Right. If you gave the trainer 12 months, you would probably see a decent um, a decent change or the start of that change. But personally, um, you know, 12 month is our minimum. I like to see a 36 month commitment because I, I, I if I believe in the system and I have vetted the system and I've done my due diligence up front and talked to people that are using that system and I have that unique ability or aptitude to understand the technology and 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 really do a deep dive in it, I'm going to give it three years and I will invest in that. Now, if I run my ROI in 12 or 18 months and I'm just losing my shirt and I revisit the revisit it with the vendor and, and they either aren't performing to what I expect or something in the market has changed and made their technology irrelevant, I'll pull the trigger earlier. But, you know, something like a boomtown where Part of the beauty of that site is and CRM is is the database of of people that build up over an extended period of time, and then the ability to market to that database. It's not even really a twelve month play. So it's a the longer you stick with it, the better it's going to be. And from a business perspective, you need to be in a a place financially that you're okay with that, and that you understand that spend, and it's not. You know, it's not doing anything to you so negative that you can't, you know, put dinner on the table at night. Um, but I think 12 month is a minimum that, that you need to give something. Um, you know, again, three years for us is something that we really look at. Is it, is it a company or a piece of technology that we could see over the next 36 month, months really making a difference in our business? Got it. And, and look, that that 12 month, you know, giving giving that marketing channel or or tactic or whatever, giving it a 12 month run ties in ties into your 12 month business plan. Exactly. Um, um, so, oh man, I had a good question and I totally, I was trying to set it up with that and I totally lost it. I'll, it'll come back to me. So where are you, what are you doing now? So uh, talk to us about where you are, if, if you can, Chris, you know, where are you spending money and, uh, uh, you know, and, and getting leads from? Sure. So uh, our, our lead generation, our, we, we feel like, unless you have at least 10 separate and distinct lead pillars of lead generation that you're not setting yourself up for success. Holy cow. So, yeah. And, 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 you know, if one of them goes away, we still have the other nine or 10 or 11. I, I think last year we generated business from 14 different distinct sources of business. So whether it's having a relationship with a, a loan servicer or an REO company to pay-per-click advertising, to inbound marketing, you know, search engine optimization, things like that. Um, we're heavy investors in Zillow, um, to our past clients in our sphere, to, you know, Peggy Lynn making outbound phone calls. It's old school every day, making phone calls to, um, 
for sale by owners, expireds, withdrawns. We, we still do all that. We do traditional farming with postcards. Um, we do it all. And I, I think that I, here's another place that I think a lot of people get hung up is the money is not in the generation. The money's in the conversion. So we spend a lot of time and we've spent a lot of time getting our team structure correct to make sure that we convert on the highest number of leads that we can when they come in. Um, you know, I, any given week, I could have 150 to 250 leads coming into the team. So I've got two full-time client care managers whose only job it is is to answer the phone, email, and text when they come in. I've got six full-time buyer's agents that those client care managers actually do a warm handoff directly to the buyer's agent so we don't lose the continuity of the phone call to get them to schedule an appointment. And then my buyer's agents are out showing homes and writing contracts. And once they're done, they hand off their documentation to our to our transaction coordinators because I don't want my buyer's agents pushing paperwork around the office. So, you know, the lead generation is great and, and, and it's awesome to have all those pillars. But if you're not set up and if you're not prepared and if you're not focused on the the lead conversion once they come in, you, you you can generate a thousand leads, but if you're converting half a percent, it doesn't matter. Right, right. And what? <clears throat> excuse me, Chris. What I was going to say earlier was, you, you know, you were talking about Boomtown, and you, you you said, hey, you know, the longer you're on that, the better because it builds on itself. And and the point that I was going to make is, whatever you're doing whether it's outbound cold calls or whatever, you know, there's always a compounding effect. So the longer you can stay in that channel, right? The, 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 the farther out down the road you can get, you know, it's, it's going to be bigger and better for you. I, I, you're the first guy, right? So, so I've had other people on the show and they'll talk about five or six lead channels. Last year you had 14. How do you, I mean, that is, how do you juggle that? And how do you know where, where to double down and, and where to pull the plug? Well, we, we, we track everything. And, okay. and when you're running a business, I mean, coming from corporate America, you know, we, we, had the, we had the CFO, we had the controller, we had the accounting department, we had the finance department. You know where your money's going. You know what's working and what's not working. So um, I can tell you without question how much I spent for every lead generation pillar, how many leads each lead generation pillar generated, of those leads, how many were converted to appointments, of those appointments, how many were converted into to sales and, and got me revenue. And without, without that kind of intelligence in your business, you're flying blind. You, you can't you know, you, you, you can't run a business if you don't know that information. So at the end of every year, the end of every quarter, we do it quarterly, but then I kind of roll it up at the end of every year. I can tell you exactly what my cost per lead is. I can tell you exactly what my um, what my cost per closed transaction is and what my ROI is per pillar. Right. And that's when we make the decision. You know, if, if one of them you know, cost me, if the ROI on one falls below uh, a certain threshold when all the other ones are sitting at a certain level, the, then we start to ask the question, is it worth it? Are we doing something wrong? Is our vendor doing something wrong? Um, wow. Is there something better that we can be doing or is it simply time to to pick up our chips and walk away and and, and give something else a shot? And that's something too that, that I, I think is very important some of these new shiny objects that come out are intriguing and, and I think have merit in our market. So at the end of the year, when I see something that might not be performing as well or that is that still has an ROI but is underperforming for my for my company, do I take that money and put it into the new object? Do I put it into the new thing if I've done my due diligence on it? But again, unless unless you're running that, you see so many agents or, and companies that will stop before something has caught on or will take something that they don't think the ROI is good when it could very well be just fine and move it towards the new shiny object without using that that business intelligence to make that decision. Our our business is run on data and and those data points are the only way to make intelligent decisions, whether it's marketing, advertising, or, or whatever the case may be. And if you're not tracking that, you're doing yourself a disservice. 
Right. I, I totally agree. And, and you know, uh, what you what you started the, that this whole sort of uh, discussion uh, in this topic with, you know, you know, your cost of lead uh, per lead, and then, you know, your cost of sale or cost per deal. Right. And then and then from that. Uh, and I'm just reiterating this because just in case people didn't catch up, you know, or, or keep up with you. And and then from that, you know, your return on investment for that. H- how often do you see, I mean, certainly, you know, you're going to throw money at these, these 10 or 14 channels. Some of them are going to give you uh, m- more leads than others. Um, and others will have higher conversion rates. You know, is it just is is it just the ROI for you where you know where to double down on? And I guess here's my real question, right? If you, you if you can't convert, that's on you. It's it's not necessarily the the fault of the lead, right? So do you ever you know if you were getting internet leads, which which you know we know have a long gestation period, um, um, you know what I mean? Is is it is it something that that you're not doing? If you're not converting those leads, is it something that that you can get better at? Because maybe those are cheaper. You know what I mean? I don't know if I'm, I, I don't think I asked that as well as I could have. No, without question. And, and you, and you see and hear that all the time in our business is, you know, the leads suck. You know, the, they're, they're no good. The, the leads you're getting me aren't, aren't any good. Here's the deal is whenever a lead contacts you, that lead has raised their hand and said, I want more information or I want the assistance of somebody on the other side of that, that screen. What you do with that lead and how, how well you can convert those leads is your problem. Um, if you know that you're doing the best you can and you are keeping up with, with, with best in class conversion techniques and scripts and dialogues and how quickly you're answering the phone and how quickly you're responding and you're doing all that, then you can look at the ROI strictly from a from a number standpoint. But if you know, if for instance you launch a new program and you're inundated with leads, and your your time to contact for the first lead goes from you know ours runs about ninety seconds, and and that goes you know all of a sudden goes from ninety seconds to nine minutes. That's my problem. I I as a company owner have failed to set my team up for success. But once we make contact with that lead, then it's all about my team members and what they can do. So, you know, I, I, I think if you're looking at, at leveling the playing field, to your point, yeah, it's all about ROI. Um, if you can't convert, maybe you're just not a good converter and maybe those internet lead generation portals for you aren't something you should focus on. Maybe you should focus on your sphere. Right. Maybe you should focus on making the phone calls. Maybe you should focus on sending out postcards and market updates and doing things like that because the internet is a completely different animal. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with that. Um, so is, what are you doing? Like, like unpack what you're doing with Tom Fury. I know you're the internet marketing guy for Tom Fury, which I think is very, very cool. Um, you're putting together these packages. What, what's, what's, the, what's the long 12-month vision for what you're doing with Tom Ferry? Well, I, I, so it's a couple things. It, it's it's taking industry industry um, kind of taking trends and topics that are hot in the industry right now that that a lot of his clients and a lot of the coaches are talking about. So I'll give you an example. Something that everybody seems to be talking about today is um, landing pages for people getting values of their homes. Yep. So I'm doing a white paper for him on that. What what, hey, what oh, are the best- Chris, not to jump in real quick. Uh, the guy you should talk to, and you probably have, is Mitch Reback. Mitch Reback. Yeah, do you know Mitch? I don't, but but I, I have. I'm talking to the guys at Unbounce. Is he is he over at that group? Uh, no, no. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. So, no, no, it's all good. So so taking something like that and putting together pros, cons, best practices, pitfalls you know, what, what to look for, what, what are the best design ideas and, and really putting that into a package that, that he can then take out or that we can take out to the coaches who can then have a deep understanding of that, who then can go out to the clients and, and speak intelligently to the clients. Um, so taking, taking one topic each month and doing that, um, I'll be speaking at his events uh, on, on again, hot topics and things that are going on and I'll also be working with him on, what does what does the future of uh, you know his coaching programs? What are, what's it look like? How can we make sure that internet and technology remain top of mind? 
while the fundamentals are, are never lost. And again, what, what's that profile of the different kind of tiers of agents? What's that look like? And, right. and how can, you know, how can Tom provide best practices to his clients in terms of, of technology, given what we've talked about today, how quickly everything's changing? So, you know, shiny object here, shiny object there. That's great. We'll put what we think is the template or the snapshot or the blueprint of what that should look like. And we'll change it every 12 months, given what how the market changes. But, you know, I, I think that agents struggle. And it's what we talked about in the very beginning of the call. Agents struggle to know what they should do. And, and as agents and then teams and companies grow, I think they struggle to know what's next. And I think they struggle to know what that cost is. So I'm working with Tom on all of that to help, you know, help everybody remain relevant in this in this ever changing technology landscape. Got it. You guys should wrap me into that packet, into that team. I think I get up out. Hey, Done. come on out. <laughs> hey, so so I want to talk about. Um, I mean, you you know you, you have this corporate background. You you took Peggy Lynn from six to 106 deals. And, you know, your vision for this year is not to go 150, you're going to go 250. And I find it fascinating that guys like you, right, you, how do you keep pushing it? How do you keep moving the goalpost forward or the ball down the field when you really don't need to? You could build a tidy little business doing, you know, you never, you, you're not selling, Chris. You don't put anybody in your car. You know, you're managing a team and and you're, you're turn, turning it into this fine-tuned tuned machine why not just why not just do 100 deals a year and uh, you can still i mean you can go to the beach right now go to hawaii right now with a crown on your hand amen um <laughs> so so how do i move the? how, how do i move the yeah i mean it like post forward yeah very, in your in your mind carefully when i'm in business with my wife um okay and, and i mean and and that's serious she is amazing at what she does and you know we we have a vision of what we want to build and we have for us it starts with what are we and in understanding that i think we're in a very different position than a lot of teams are in or agents are in we have the end goal in mind how much money do we need in the bank and or invested or how many investment properties do we need to have that at the end of nine years we don't have to work anymore so given that i need to work backwards on given our average commission and given the number of deals that I expect out of each team member, how many deals do I need to do each year in order to achieve that vision? So it, it, it's all a mathematical equation for me. Um, but, you know, Peggy Lynn is, she's, she inspires, she motivates, um, you know, she, she works with the team on that. And I focus on the, the operations and the, 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 the kind of, the separation of how we work is just wonderful. And, you know, why not just stop here? Again, because we have a goal and we have that end vision in mind. Now, do I know exactly what that will look like? Um, do I know exactly what that'll look like in 36 months? No. Um, I'm working very closely with Tom and our coach, Debbie Holloway, on exactly what that looks like. There, there are a lot of different options when you get to the size of our team. Do we continue to expand our team as it is today in the location it is today? Do I take this business model and open it up in different markets? Um, right. I, I don't know what the answer is yet. Peggy Lynn and I will work with the coaches to get to that point. Um, but one of the things that when we get to this point, you know, and, and, and talking about going to sit on the beach is Peggy Lynn and I are at the point right now where we've built up the team to a very nice number and 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 the people that are working um we, we have redundancy in the business other than me and peggy lynn we we are now the single points of failure so over the next 12 18 24 months we'll be looking at how do we get people into the business that can do what we do so we can take take ourselves to the next level whether that's taking more time off or helping drive the vision of the business or opening up, um, you know, additional businesses in different locations. So it's, it's, you know, again, we've got the end goal in mind and we know what that number looks like. 
and based on working backwards, we know what we need to do. Right. Okay. I mean, it's because you're, you are very, I mean, clearly you're a very data driven guy, right? For you, what, how to build it out and how to move the ball forward is uh, just a mathematical, mathematical equation for you. What's that number, Chris? I, and if you don't want to share it with me, that's fine. But I mean, is it, is it, is it more than, I mean, I'm, uh, look, I believe it's more than 10 million. Um, is it, is it between 10 and 20 million? It, it, it would be higher than that. Got it. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, it, it, so, so that's, a, that's a good question, right? Is it, is it 10 million? Is it 20 million? Is it 50 million? Can, am I, I am a firm believer. I won't ask it as a question. I'm a firm believer that, that when you get to something like a 10 million, that you can turn around and invest that 10 million in different ways to make that 10 million into 50 without having to put clients in your car. Um, so it's, it's work, 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 build, 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 turn that around and invest it strategically so that money, it, it not, not stock market kind of stuff, but, right. but in, invest that money strategically in, in, in either companies or technologies or um, additional teams that can continue to grow that wealth. Right, right. I, I totally agree. Um, I, I had a I had a personal conversation with a guy named David Osborne, the COO of Keller Williams. Do you, do you know Do you know David? I know of him. Okay, um, and uh, he's he's how old are you, Chris? By the way, I'm 44. I'm 41. Okay, we're similar age, and and yeah. David's our age as well. And uh, and he has built out his big deal. Um, him and Pat Hyben and, and Patrick Lilly, they're all working on building as much horizontal income as they can. And at this point, you know, David makes about four million bucks a year, and uh, and the majority of that is from different investments. And and I and I and I said, I said David, like, how much is enough for you? I said four million bucks. That's a that's a nice little life. It's all coming in passively. You know, what's your end game? And he's like, look, man, I you know, I I want to I want to to make a hundred million dollars. And then he said, then I and then he said, but as uh, as over the last few years, I felt like that was thinking too small. Now I think it's a billion. And for me, Chris, here's my deal. You know, for me, my number is is actually is between ten and twenty million, uh, and let's call it fifteen million. Right? If I had fifteen million bucks, I'm happy. I don't need to have fifty or a hundred. Um, you know, I mean, uh, I have I have multiple Porsches right now. I live in a fantastic house. You know, I don't I don't know what I'd do with it. And and I think I think that lack, Chris, on my for me personally, this inability to think bigger of 50 million or a hundred million is limiting my growth today. And, and that's why I asked that question for you is how do you, you know, how do you think that big, you know, that $50 million big, and you may not reach it. Maybe you'll get to 30 million, but you know what? That's a great number. Exactly. And, and Tom's always said that to us. Like, uh, imagine your, imagine your goal is to sell a hundred million dollars in real estate every year, but you fail miserably and only sell 80. Right. You, you still sold $80 million worth of real estate in a year. And that, that, so that question that you just posed, how much is enough is, is the question that Peggy Lynn and I struggle with the most is what, what is that number? Because we know a lot of people that are worth a lot of money and they're still working their asses off every day. Right. And we look at them, you know, in their sixties and seventies and think to ourselves, I don't want that. No. I, I don't want to be that guy who is still, who is still just working and working and working, um, just to get more. So that that is something we're trying. We're not struggling with, but we're trying to figure out exactly what that number is. But I, I, I think it has to. It has to do with finding out what the number is where we can turn around and invest that money. So we're making passive income and actually not working in the business anymore. And if, if we decide that, I mean, if we decide that number is 2 million, great, it's 2 million. If we decide it's 50, great, it's 50, 100. I don't know exactly what that number is. We, we have that, we have the idea in our head right now. But um, again, that's, that's, that's the wild card for us. But that's an amazing wild card to have. Yeah. I, I think that 90, I don't know what the statistic would be, but I'm guessing it's probably 99% of agents and maybe higher never have that conversation. Right. 
because they're just going to work, work, work until they fall over. And I pray that they've got something put away. For us, it's it's not about that. It's it's about being comfortable for us, leaving something for our daughter, spending a lot of time in Hawaii and and being able to travel and be happy and not having to ever worry about right. Um, money. That's and that is it. That's what the, I, I'm, you I, you wrapped it up right where I was gonna I was gonna lead off from. You know that 70, 60, 70 year old guy that is still working, that is is already wealthy. One thing I've seen those guys. I know those guys, and you know what? They still worry. They 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 don't need to worry from my viewpoint, but they worry. Uh, and I I don't know what that is, but uh, you know. Um, and I'll, uh, Tom shared when he was on the show, he shared with me what, what he does, his morning ritual. And, you know, I won't go through the whole thing, but he wraps up in turn in talking about money. He wraps up his morning ritual by he, he knows how much he wants to make personally, not, not from his company, but him personally. And, uh, he writes it down every day, but he multiplies it by three. Now I didn't ask him what that number was just cause I, I, I that would have led into you know, his company revenue, but um, do you do something like that? Do you, do you take that number? Has Tom ever shared that with you? Something similar. We we were we were with him um, a few years ago and had the conversation about money, and we wrote down what that number was. And in, in regular Tom fashion, he walked by very nonchalantly, looked at the number that Peggy Lynn and I wrote down, and simply said, "Add a zero. <laughs> and you know, it. three three years ago, we thought. You're nuts, dude. You're crazy. Like you, you, you th- that that's just that's ludicrous. Three years later, we're we're thinking to ourselves, yeah, that's doable. And and why don't we why don't we double that or why don't we triple that? So, um, you know, Peggy Lynn has a very similar routine to Tom's. Um, you know, she worked with Tom and Debbie, our coach, and Gino Bafari, the CEO of Intero Real Estate, on that morning routine. And her morning routine includes. Um, I make X dollars every month. So, and, and in, inevitably, whatever she writes down and whatever she sets her mind to, and, and we decide that that's what we're going to do, it comes to fruition. Amazing. So, um, you know, it, very big on the morning routines and the morning rituals to get your mindset and straight f- throughout the day. And um, yeah, but again, to your point, the big question is, is how much is enough? Because... Uh, I am not, we are not going to be working when we're 60. We're done. And and I, I have no problem um, reaching whatever number that is and walking into the team that day. And if they hear this, you know, uh, they, they, you know, they know it's coming. We'll walk in one day and say, we're done. Now we will have set up an exit plan. We will have either somebody purchasing the business or, or you know, we'll, we'll go through and do all that. We're not just going to walk away from what we've built, but we know we're walking away. We know when we're walking away. Um, the question is, how much do we need to get there? And then, how much do we? How much do we want to make after that to make life easy? Right. Sail around. You know, rent a the hundred foot yacht and sail around Greece. Hey, let's wrap it up, date Chris. This awesome, awesome episode. Um, and if look. All the show notes of all this stuff that Chris has been talking about, you can find at superagentslive.com uh, slash Chris Spiker. Uh, and uh, so Chris, give us a book recommendation. You know, I'm an, imagine I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. Uh, what book should I go buy today? Um, so I think there are – I'm not going to give you one. I'm going to give you three that have <laughs> made a, a, a pretty big impact on our lives. Um one of them is Tom's. It's Life by Design. Um, it, it the the story of where he went, where he started, to where he is today is is amazing. Um, Darren Hardy's The Compound Effect. Yep, I, I think is a pretty amazing book. And then, I, and and they're they're kind of similar. Is the new one by Gary Gary and Jay, The One Thing. Yeah. You know, I, I think people's ability to really shift their mindset on and and focus on what's important and get rid of the noise is kind of the the theme of those three books. And those three books really resonated with me. Gotcha. Well, look, we had Jay Jay Papasan on the show talk about the one thing. Uh, Darren Hardy's book is awesome, and uh, you know what? I'll go get Tom's. And look, anybody out in the audience, if you want a copy of these books, you can get a free copy from Audible. Just go to audibletrial.com slash superagentslive and and pick up a free copy. Hey, Chris, thanks for coming on. Hey, t- let us know where we can find you, and we'll sign off. 
Yeah, uh, uh, thank you very much for having me on. I, I really, I really appreciated it. So, um, on Twitter, we're at Spiker Group. Uh, our website is spikergroup.com. Um, and if anybody wants to find me on Facebook, you can just look me up on Facebook, Chris Spiker, and uh, you know, I'd be happy to chat. We're, um, you know, we're kind of an open book. We we love helping like-minded agents, both Peggy Lynn and I. So, uh, yeah, we're we're open to uh, we're open to connecting with people. Awesome. And look, and if you and, and Spiker is spelled S P E I C H E R, not S P I K. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, if you're a go getter out there and uh, you're in Chris's town, uh, I'm sure he's always looking for talent. Yeah, de- definitely. If, if you're in the Montgomery and Howard County areas in Maryland, please p- please look us up. Yeah, buy him coffee. And look, and if you've enjoyed this episode as much as I have, you know, reach out to Chris on Twitter or send him an email and and thank him for his time. Because look, he has spent a total of you know an at fifty nine twenty one seconds, fifty nine minutes with me. So I know I know you know your ROI, and this is probably cost you. Eight thousand dollars spending uh, spending an hour with me, so I appreciate it, Chris. And uh, in the, you know who I'd love to have on? I'd love to have uh, Peggy on. Peggy I, Lynn. She, Peggy she, Lynn. She she would not only love to be on, but she's been sitting right behind me the whole time. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> on the computer. So uh, I, I'm sure she would love to come on. Her uh, you know her focus is really uh, mindset, and and she is 100 percent a listing agent. Doesn't work with buyers, and her her story, if she can get through it without. Um, with without emotion which she's she's an emotional person about her story and she she should be because she's got an amazing amazing story um i th- i think will really resonate and move the people in your audience oh oh man you set the teed that up i'm excited about it. and look i mean i really want to find out what it's like to you know you two you said early you two guys are, and your skill sets and your work styles are super complementary and uh, so i want to i want to know about that from peggy lynn's perspective and i also want to know what it's like you know i mean it, it's got to be tough you, you wake up next to peggy lynn you you, you see her face uh, as well as she sees yours you go to work you see each other's faces and you eat dead i mean look it's got enough's enough Enough. I, how do you manage that? I don't know, but I look. I'm going to send you an email when we get done, and uh, I, I would like to explore that with Peggy Lynn. Yeah, that is, is, again, she she would love to be a great topic, and and I will say based on that, there is there is no, and I'm not I'm, I'm not BSing the crowd, and I'm not BSing you. There is no greater joy for me in this business than spending the entire day and night and everything with Peggy Lynn because we have that unique ability to um, work together, to love each other, to to be partners in life and partners in business. And it, we have people all the time pull us aside and say, no, no, tell, tell us what it's really like. <laughs> and and they're just floored. Like, we we love it. And I wouldn't have it any other way. I mean, I fly out to California for two days to, to spend with Tom. And I changed my flight to take the red eye home Friday night because I wanted to be back Saturday morning to spend the day with her. That That's, that's a very unique thing that we have. Yeah, and look, and 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 when you're 70, not working, you hit your goal of 50 million bucks. You're gonna be able to sit on, you know, you're gonna be holding hands at 90 and being able to look, you know, I mean, you guys did it together. You built this life together. So, uh, yeah, nine years from now, I want you back on the show. Tell I I, I want to hear that. You know, well, look, hey, we'll wrap it up. Chris, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I appreciated it and had a great time. See you, bud.